very flat. In fact, apart from the round belly, he couldn't be flatter if he tried, which is what male lions do best. Now, just a quick reintroduction for those of you that have just jumped on board. My name is Jamie, and this morning Sebastian is on camera with me, a familiar face and name for many of you. And speaking of familiar faces and names, we are sitting with one of our Birmingham boys, who is doing a marvellous job of sleeping off a very full belly. What did you hear, boy? Lifted up his head, looked across in the direction of the east. Now, I'm not sure where half of the Birmingham boys are. I actually have no idea where they are. I know there's one somewhere knocking about on Buffles Hook, and there's one on Hoffman's, I think. It's either on Ho somewhere to the south of our traverse area so they have been well and truly split up i know that they are with the sticks lionesses at the moment one of them is with the sticks lioness so that's where they've been hanging about oh look at those eyelashes isn't that lovely that eye's hurting him a lot you can see it in the way that his face is twitching he's not sleeping properly because his face is really very sore and that injury is right up close to the eyelid which is why it's weeping which is why there's all that moisture around there it's probably very painful for him it's a new injury it's amazing how male lions once they come to dominance they become this sort of crisscross of scars on their face on their bodies all I can see at the moment is that belly. That, that, is, that is what stands out quite spectacularly. But those fresh scars that you see them with every now and again all tell a little bit about their life history. A story to tell. Oh, of course, these are the biggest male lions that we see at the moment. But Judy, you want to know how big do can a male lion's paw grow? When you look at their tracks, the biggest male lion tracks that I have seen, actually, probably in a way, um, belongs belong to the Matimbas, come to think of it. I don't think, even um, Shimboko and Masano, which were the two male lions that I spent a lot of time with, before I moved here, even Shimboko and Masana were, their paws were a little bit smaller than the Matima males. And if you look at their tracks, about the size of a man's hand, not quite fully spread out, but close to being with the fingers sort of spread out, is around about how big a lion track will get. And what I'll try and do for you is I'll try and show you a lion track, perhaps a little bit later, when we leave this male lion to make space for other vehicles. And I'll show you what a massive male lion track looks like. Just imagine the power behind that. So much force rolled into one. And I mean, I've been fortunate enough to participate in a couple of lion dartings, whether it was for translocating or for veterinary care for certain issues that had been man-made. Man I've been able to participate in lion dartings. And there is... The weight, the sheer weight of just one leg, when you pick up a paw and you hold it in your hand, is extraordinary. It's actually mind-boggling, just how powerful they really are. And you feel the muscles of the forearm. They don't feel like you would expect them to. You sort of, you, you see ca big cats and you think of them as being taunt and, or taut and kind of like steel, in a way. You'd expect those muscles to be like that of a power lifter. They're not at all. They're actually really soft. They're really, really soft. They're almost flabby. And that's because they've got a completely different muscle structure to us. It feels soft and squishy, not to put too fine a point on it, but it's one of the reasons why if a lion or a leopard or a cheetah is placed in a captive situation and then released back into the wild, they don't lose condition because they, they don't need to exercise like human beings do. That condition is just there. It's a different muscle structure. He 
He doesn't look like he wants to do any exercise <laughs> at all. In fact, exercise is probably the farthest thing from this male lion's mind. Do you want to go for a jog, mister? Should we go for a run together? Maybe not. That probably is a very bad idea. Not probably. Definitely a very bad idea. Oh, Kristen, as you know, there are four males in this particular male lion coalition. And you want to know if they fight for status or hierarchy, or if the fight is kind of done once and then established for the rest of their days. The truth is that in a male lion coalition, the hierarchy is a constantly shifting thing. And it might be that one male lion has eaten better that particular week, and he hasn't wasted too much energy wandering about, and he hasn't been mating, and then therefore is just in a little bit of a better condition than his coalition mates. So it's an ever-shifting thing, and it's it would be very foolish of us to give a definite answer as to which of the Birmingham boys is more dominant. And it's not necessarily dependent on age either. It really isn't. Even though some of the Birmingham boys are older than others, it doesn't necessarily factor into their hierarchy. A lot of it has to do with personality and uh, aggression levels. So they will fight constantly, and in fact, most of the scars that they, get, that they gain throughout their lives come from each other. Fighting over food, fighting over females, occasionally fighting with females. And it's so difficult for us to comprehend because we're human beings and we're programmed not to solve, in theory, not to solve our problems with violence, but that's a day in a life. It's a polite conversation for a lion. A little bit of a disagreement, turn around and whack your brother or your cousin in the face. And of course, as we discussed, those massive paws can cause some considerable damage. Now, this is pretty much a day in the life, or at least a Sunday morning in the life of a lion. Let's go and find out what a day in the life or a Sunday morning of life is like with bushwalk. <laughs> 